Hello everybody, Dr. Carmen Bryant, Psychological Health Consultants and Services, the host of Redefining Yourself. This is a program that I developed for women that are in, thinking of leaving, needing more education, or those that have left and are recovering from domestic violence. The particular or specific type of domestic violence that I'm referring to, or the one that I educate about, is narcissist abuse. And so I am a narcissist abuse recovery specialist. And so if you have not already, please subscribe to my YouTube channel. It is Dr. Carmen Bryant, D-R-C-A-R-M-E-N-B-R-Y-A-N-T, Overcoming Narcissist Abuse. And I also have a professional Facebook page, which is Psychological Health Consultants and Services. Please hit the like, the thumbs up, or go over to the YouTube, and please subscribe to my YouTube channel by hitting the subscribe button and the bell. And um, you'll see whenever I post new videos, you'll see whenever I go live. And normally I go live on Sundays between 8 and 9 o'clock Pacific time, which is on the uh, West Coast. I'm on the West Coast, so I'm not Washington, D.C., I'm Washington State. And so I know over on the East Coast, which is New York, and that side is, um, that is, um, hold on, that's three hours. There we go. Nova Scotia, which is four hours. You have, I think, six hours someone from, okay, hold on, let me think, Canada. I think it was Canada, o Ottawa, welcome, and I think it was bonjour, so I like that, I think you guys speak French, right, bonjour, and then Holland and Germany, that is hallo, same same thing, or grüsti, which is the southern portion of Germany, um, oi, Brazil, hello, how are you doing, UK, hello, how are you guys doing, anyaseo, Korea, um, I have to figure out, I used to know Japanese, the Japanese word, and then China, I'm going to find the Mandarin. It's actually not Chinese, Mandarin. I think the, can't think of the other name, but I'm going to get those languages. And hello, uh, hola in uh, Spanish. So you guys just give me the languages, and I'll write it down, make sure I give you greetings in your language. Thank you guys so much. For those of you that are new to my channel, thank you guys so much for joining me. Thank you for finding something that I had to say valuable to you in your process of healing or gathering information to determine what type of situation you may be in. A lot of people are in domestic violence or really narcissist, narcissist um, relationships and don't realize what they're going through because it's a very different type of abuse that you go through when you're dealing with, this is, this is psychological, physical and uh, emotional abuse and it's very calculated, it's very, it's very demeaning, uh, humiliating um, as if domestic violence violence isn't it is <clears throat> but when you're dealing with an individual excuse me <clears throat> when you're dealing with an individual who has narcissistic personality disorder and hopefully you've been watching my videos you'll understand that this type of abuse is very unique and very different uh, it's almost insidious you know uh, and uh, there is a cycle to it and so I do always say and I and in most of my videos I do say that even though I created the program for women in mind men go through the same thing that women do and we have kings here on this YouTube channel thank you guys so much for joining us thank you for your input thank you for the information that you provide and giving us knowledge about what it's like to go through as a man um, with a female that is a narcissist and so thank you guys for joining in thank you guys for um, emailing me and talking to me on YouTube I usually try to answer back as much as I can um, I do have a full-time practice so a lot of times I have to come in when I can and I try to make sure I post a video every day Monday through Friday uh, Tuesday through Friday and then come on live on Sundays and so thank you guys for joining me so today I wanted to pick the topic um, of the three phases of narcissistic relationships or let's see uh, relationship cycle so uh, but it's the three phases of narcissistic relationships or three cycles of narcissist uh, narcissist let me think I'm thinking of the title three phases of narcissistic relationship there you go relationships there we go and so I went to uh, let's see, there are two people that talk about the exact same thing, um, and because of the fact um, uh, I, I, I am writing a second book to give you more information on what you've been through, um, and it is a lot of information in the book, and so I was trying to figure out how to consolidate it into uh, smaller topics to make it easier for you to understand the cycles, but in the book I will discuss it in detail, so it will give you some insight on what you were going through. Uh, a lot of you have been emailing me or making comments on YouTube like, oh my gosh, did you know the abuser, or oh my gosh, how did you know that? Ah, ancient Chinese secret, huh? So, but yes, I do understand, been there, done that, uh, and so um, let me talk about these three cycles. So on one um, is uh, 
East, uh, esteemology, esteemology, and this is by Miss Savannah Gray. She's a freelance freelance writer and a hypnotherapist, sports fanatic and philosopher. She's a degree in psychology and is a founder of esteemology.com, a website dedicated to educating and healing survivors of abusive relationships. The other one, which talks about the exact same thing, uh, is from the Minds Journal, uh, and this is the three phases of narcissist of uh, every narcissistic relationship cycle. Um, and this is written by, and both of them say that, oh, esteemology, same person. This is on a different site. Okay. Well, well. Okay, so the three phases of uh, narcissist relationships, I think that sounds better, narcissist relationships, first of all is the over-evaluation phase, the devaluation stage, and the discard. And so many of you have been contacting me and letting me know that you're in the discard. You know, I think one or two people said they're in the relationship. They're trying to figure out what they're going through. But most people are in the discard. Uh, and that is very painful. So let me take you through. And I'm not going to try to stay on too long, but this is a good topic. So let's talk about the over-evaluation phase. Okay. First of all, what she says, and the same thing I say, is that... Um, never find it surprising that a, when a narcissist ap approaches you. Number one, you probably won't know that it is that the person, he or she, is a narcissist. A narcissist is very patient in looking for their new supply. Nine times out of ten, they're probably still connected to supply or have other supplies, but they're seeking new supply. And so they take, take a lot of time and patience to study you. They study your Facebook, they study Instagram, all your social media, uh, what they may do is just all of a sudden show up in a place that you're at without you knowing to kind of watch you, to see what your demeanor is like, to see how you talk, um, to see who you hang around. They study you. They go look you up on on um, on on uh, like Google. They, they look you up. They look at your career. They look at your history. They read things about you. And so and then they study you. Um, you know, on YouTube, you have a lot of narcissists that are on YouTube making videos and then watching watching you on the videos if you make videos. And so they watch you. They study you. They try to pick up on your language. They pick up on your interests. What do you like? Where do you like to go? What is your lifestyle at? That's why I tell you guys on social media, social media that is not a place to air all your business. That's not a place to put all your information, to put all your business, you know, to, to talk about how you feel that day because they can sense when you are, you know, they like codependent people. They like people that have emotional problems. They have people that have a history of bad relationship. They like, you know, they, they, they look for those instabilities. They, they, they're prodding to see, you know, how can I approach? So they, they're very calculating. They think, how am I going to approach this individual? Um, you know, sometimes like, I don't know, or what they'll do is they'll come around they kind of stalk you. You don't realize you're being stalked and they kind of stalk you. They even watch to see where do you live? What kind of car do you drive? How do you, you know, you're, the people that you're around, what type of people are you around? You know, um, high status. They like high status people. They like people that, that have educations, that have businesses, that have money, that have property. The higher the uh, the status, the, the better it is for them. And the, the more, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? The higher status, the greater the fuel you are for them. Um, and usually what happens is, is once they target you, because you become a target, once they target you, they hone in on you. Uh, in the military, uh, when we used to shoot M16s, um, there's a site. And once you, you have to take is battle site. The, the battle site is the basic site. It's from the front of the weapon to the back of the weapon where you line your eye up with the target. And you have to connect it. That's why we go. We call it the zero range. We go to the range to zero the weapon or, or calibrate the weapon to our eyesight. And so we look in the weapon and we fire to see where the weapon is firing. And we calibrate that weapon. We, we turn the front dial and the back dial. We el the elevation, the dials, you know, and... and and this military terminology, but we, we turn those dials to to calibrate our eye to that weapon so that it becomes our personal weapon that is calibrated to our sight, you know, and how we see a target. And so what they do is, is they watch you and then um, they target you. Then they calibrate their sights to you to figure out how to approach you. And they're very, very, um, what's the word I'm looking for? They're very, very focused. When they want you and when they're focused on getting you, they, they lock into you and they lock into that target. And, and they're, it's almost like they're relentless. They will do anything they possibly can 
to get you because there's something of value about you that they want. So think about it. They're already people dealing with low self-esteem. They're already dealing, they're, they, they don't like to be criticized. They already have an instability in their life and they have to find supply to help their self-esteem, you know, and, and when they start running low on fuel, they go looking for new supplies. So they've locked in on you. That's why I tell you guys, I tell you over and over again, please be careful what you post on Facebook, especially about yourself. You have predators out there that are watching you. You know, you're coming on there and, and I, I'm not I'm not pointing my finger and trying to, to be ugly with you. I'm trying to give you some safety precautions. When you're half naked on Facebook, you're just you become narc bait. You know, if you're very sexual on Facebook, you become narc bait. You have become your own calling card, you know. And then you wonder how you end up with a person like this because you kind of put yourself out there. So you have to be careful. You know, I'm not your lifestyle is your lifestyle. I'm just here as a as a person giving you advice to keep you safe, to help you from getting back into a situation like that or even getting into a situation like that, okay? So be careful what you have on social media. Be private. You don't have to tell all your business. Don't tell everybody how you're feeling. You know, feeling constipated today, feeling bloated today, feeling sad, feeling depressed. Nobody needs to know all that. Don't tell everybody all your business. How do you know they won't come and look for you when you're depressed, bloated, or constipated, you know, and bring you something to help you with your constipation? That would be a, a perfect conversation for them. Now, that's just a joke, but I'm trying to give you the, trying to give you the, the meaning behind that, okay? To make you laugh. Smile, smile. Okay, so let's see. Um, so let's say they finally figured out how to connect with you. They may start a conversation, and the conversation might be a good conversation. You and them are having a good conversation, you know, and... Keep in mind, they're mirroring you. So they're mirroring how do you talk? You know, what do you, you know, how are your hand gestures? You know, they're mirroring you. So it's like looking in a mirror. Be careful what you're saying to them. And be aware when people are asking a lot of questions. They ask a lot of questions. They want to know a lot about you. They want to know a lot about your profession. They want to know a lot about what you do. Or they want to know about your profession. Who doesn't like talking about their profession, right? So they'll ask you a lot of questions about your profession. You know, uh, what type of people do you serve? You know, what do you do? They may come in as a professional uh, and, and offer you, you know, a partnership. Or, you know, they, they're going to find something to um, get your interest, you know. So don't think they're going to just ride up on a horse, you know, with this, this armor or, you know, a, a, a female in a bikini on a horse rides up and, and her hair is flowing in the wind. Or this man's going to ride up with all this six pack, you know, and, and on a horse and looking like Fabio with their hair flying or, you know, got a jerry curl, if that's your thing, you know, or if, if, if they come in and they're clean shaved. So don't, don't, don't look so much on the image of the person. They're going to come in where there might be a need. They may come in and have a conversation with you based on your interest and so they're very clever they're very very strategic you know they're studying you so by the time that they approach you they've already studied you for a while so be aware keep your heart guarded keep your mind guarded be aware you're getting information that's what the coaches are on YouTube that are actually teaching you something that's what they're teaching you okay to be aware of your surroundings uh, in the military we called it op, uh, uh, OPSEC um, Operation security. Even when we when we were in Korea, we used to go out. But when the security was high, you know, they gave us um, what's it called? They gave us curfews, but also to be aware of your surroundings, be aware of your environment. So you always had to watch, watch your environment, watch before you get around corners. You know, we always had to stay aware of the surroundings. I'm telling you, be aware of your surroundings. Be aware of people that want too much information from you. You know, be aware. Okay. Uh, so let's see. So now, once they connect with you, they compliment you a lot. They talk to you. They idolize you. They put you on a pedestal. It's like a high to them. They're getting high, um, you know, and they're and they're excited because they got a new toy that they're playing with. So they're gonna do anything to. So remember the the illusion and the mask is up. So the mask is up and they're looking at you through this mask. You don't see their facial features. You don't know anything about them. But the, all you see is their eyes and they're talking to you. And all you see is this right here. You see their, their eyes and you may see their mouth moving. That's all you may see. And I'm just giving you a vision, a vision, a vision, a vision of, is that right? Vision, vision. I'm giving you a, a visionary vision vision I'm giving you an outlook of there we go an outlook of what I'm talking about and so keep in mind they're behind a mask so everything about you don't see all you don't see that their nose is crooked you don't see anything about them they're hiding behind a mask and they're talking to you and they can be very very um, mesmerizing almost hypnotic you know they're hypnotic 
And so they're talking to you and, and you're almost hypnotized, like the Pied Piper, almost hypnotized, okay? And everything about you is just wonderful to them. Flowers and candy and texts and late night talks and walks and compliments and telling you how beautiful or how handsome you are and how strong you are, man. And, and, uh, but they, are, they mirror you to see how you respond. Sorry about that, you guys. But they're mirroring you to see how you respond. Um, let's see what she says here. Um, the victim is likely so caught up in the attention and is usually thinking at this point that they have found their soulmate. Remember I said that, soulmate. Um, their pursuer is exactly what they want in a partner because the narcissist is mirroring what they have learned that appeals to the target. Okay? They learn from other people too and they take those skills and they use that to try to bait you. And so they try to figure out what it is that causes you to be emotionally moved. And so they mirror you to see what appeals to you. What, what they said and you may respond like, that is a subtle cue to them so they know to withdraw that and come back with something else. And they're pretty quick, they're pretty quick. So you may like, you know, so what you saying? Oh, I didn't mean, oh, please accept my sincere apologies. I didn't mean to, to offend you like that. That is not what I meant. And then it calms you back down. It kind of like sedates you, calms you back down. And so they know what to do. But what you don't know is, is that, that they're, 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 they're trying to see what triggers you. They're trying to see what triggers you too. Because they hold that in their knowledge bank as well. Because later on it will be used against you. So th those responses that you've given, they're going to hold it in their mind. And they're going to use it later on. Because they're watching to see how you respond to them. Uh, let's see. So now, once they've, um, once the over-evaluation phase is, is, is okay, so you, that's the over-evaluation phase, okay? So uh, let's say, let's see, um, in here she says that the somatic narcissist, remember the somatic narcissist is one that is more into their appearance, material possessions, sex, you know, finding supply that usually deals with sex, um, but this grandiosity having to be seen, you know, this, this, you know, uh, the, the power, you know, all this wonderful, beautiful thing to go to the gym, they work out, you know, they grease their body up with oil and you just over there, oh, he's just so fine. Or she comes up and greases her body up in a bikini and you just like, oh my gosh, she's so beautiful. Okay. This is all the stuff that they do to mess with your emotions. Okay. And they want that response. So as soon as you're looking and staring, they got that response from you. That's, they're looking for those subtle cues. Okay. And so, um, what she said here was with the somatic narcissist, this over-evaluation phase, it may last anywhere from a few weeks to a couple of months, depending on how uh, much of a challenge you are. Um, and so, but once they've, once they're confident that they've locked you in, there's something that she says as well. Once they have, they're confident that they've locked you in, that you're locked in, then all of a sudden you'll start to know, uh, let's see, it says here, um, you'll start witnessing that, that uh, masks start coming down. They start revealing more of themselves. You know, more slip ups, more devaluation, more of those uh, scenarios in which you're like, see what you're saying. And all of a sudden they begin to like, uh, instead of apologizing, um, you'll notice that slowly they'll start like, okay, but you didn't have to say this. Or, and you're thinking like, well, I didn't say anything different than I said before, you know? So you'll start noticing little things where they start devaluing you. Um, let's see. Uh, so sh what she said here is the shift could be gradual or almost seemingly overnight. So it could be slowly, you know, because they're still testing the waters to see if they devalue you too much, if you'll go away and if it takes time to get you back. So slowly they may do it gradually to see how much you allow them to get away with, or they may just do it if they're really secure that you're locked in and your head over heels over this person, they'll, it, it'll be immediately, all of a sudden, everything about them changes. And you're like, what in the world? What kind of monster do I have in the house? Okay, so let's see. Um, they may take longer to answer their phone. That's one thing she says. It may take longer to answer the phone. You may not get those long texts anymore. Uh, they may be, um, you know, when you're talking to them, they may be distracted a lot. So it's like you're not even having an intimate conversation like you're talking to yourself. And uh-huh, uh yeah, uh-huh, uh-huh, yeah, uh-huh. Or they're talking to you and they're doing something else. Uh-huh, yeah, uh-huh, yeah, uh-huh. But they're not really listening to you. Um, they get agitated really quick uh, now. Um, they're, they're a little more moodier or they get very moody. They blame you for any kind of slight transgression or if you call them out on something, you'll notice that they'll, they'll fall apart really quick. Um, but this is, this is where you start seeing some of the abuse starts taking place. Some of it is gradual. Some of it is abruptly. Uh, let's see. 
this is where you see a lot of the blame shifting now and and so it's starting to pick up it's starting to pick up the blame shifting you'll start seeing gaslighting uh like i said some of it is 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 slow and gradual it's like it's like uh you heard the 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 i don't know if it's a parable or not but the the simile i'm not sure if this is a a, a metaphor uh but the frog you put the frog in the water on the pot uh on the stove in the pot and you gradually turn it up slowly and the frog keeps adjusting his body to the heat of the water and adjust his body to adjust to that water to the heat of the water and eventually it's too late for the frog to jump out because by then he's already boiling to death well this is ex exactly what that narcissist is doing slowly turning up that little burner turning up that burner so by the time you realize that the water is boiling and you're hurting oh my gosh my skin is boiling it's too late for you to jump out you're already connected and trauma bonded to this individual that's where the trauma bonding takes place this is where the gaslighting starts to happen little things like moving your keys and making you think that you're crazy um, all of a sudden you start noticing that that you know that they're kind of mean and you know um, let's see what else you know you notice they're not taking responsibility for their action all of a sudden they leave the house and they stop coming back at a decent time or all of a sudden that time is extended more and more they may make excuses while well, I was in a meeting or you know we have this new business that we're starting so we were at um, a restaurant for all of the you know for all these hours or these evenings or we're going out of town and all of a sudden you notice that the people that they're supposed to be out of town with is not out of town with them and they're out of town and nine times out of ten at that particular time that they're devaluing you they're probably already hoovering or love bombing or have their sights focused on another target and so the same thing that they were doing to you they're doing with someone else uh, so let's see uh, so this is this is in the devaluation stage you're probably already looking because they grow bored very easily you've supplied them with everything and now they've grown bored so it doesn't matter how much you give them how much money you have how beautiful you are you know they they they've grown bored they've gotten what they want from you they've locked themselves in they may even get some benefits from you uh, but um, they're already grown bored, so they're already looking for new supplies. So they're probably already targeting someone else and love bombing someone else or trying to get someone else's attention. And so they devalue. You notice that all of a sudden they give you the silent treatment. They're ghosting you. Uh, they, they're you know late meetings that last for a day or all, all of a sudden overnight. This was and and the people that they're supposed to be gone with, they're not gone with and all of a sudden you know so it, it it this is this is that devaluation stage so the discard phase so the discard phase which is what she said is baffling to watch uh the ease at which a narcissist can pull away from their partners many targets are left asking himself did he ever love me or did she ever love me did i mean anything to him or her the simple answer is no so see everybody's telling you the same thing no you were a pawn in the chess game and you were supply you were a a appliance you were a vehicle uh, you were something you were an object to be used and you had something that they needed so they had to put on this facade in order to get what they wanted when they got what they wanted they were ready to move on and go somewhere else um, let's see and and it, and this is the difficult phase that many of you guys are in the discard phase um, you're you're you have a low now you have a low self-esteem you know you're an emotional wreck emotionally you're tormented you know psychologically you're tormented family has been destroyed or destructed you know uh let's see um now either you've discarded or they discard remember if you discard they're probably going to try to get vengeance if they've discarded that's because they've already attached to another supply uh, and what they do is they try to keep their foot and you know keep the door open with their foot so they can come and have easy access in case it doesn't work out with that supply they can come back to you as a rebound in order to get to another supply so it's almost like coming to the home port uh, when we were in the military we used to do um, what was called land navigation and so land navigation is where they teach you the terrain features uh, uh, terrain features they teach you how to read the map they teach you how to orient yourself to the map and to find yourself out of places and how to understand what the terrains look like to maneuver from one place to another while in maneuvering in here you shoot an azimuth uh, but you always uh, the the golden rule was is not to go from point to another point to another point to another point the the whole rule was is to go to the point and they come back to the home port go to the uh, to the home point and then go from there and then recalculate to the next point and go to that next point and come back now some some were kind of spiffy you know they went from point to point to point they were able to calculate and go to all the points and find them um, I was I was just the one that was gonna come back to the home port let me come back to the home point 
and and shoot my azimuth, which is which is a um, compass, shoot the azimuth, and then find my direction to the next point. So we will go to these points. Well, that's exactly what the narcissist does. They're always trying to keep the door open and hoover you, even when they're with new supply, just in case things don't work out. They can temporarily come back to that home point and then maneuver their way, shoot their azimuth, and find another point to go to. So this is their whole life. This is, this is their whole life. So if you cut no contact, then they have to find a different supply to do this. So imagine drawing that. You just see all these lines everywhere. Their whole life is chaotic. Um, hopefully that gave you a good picture in your head. Um, so let's see. So now the victim or the survivor of this, this abuse that you've been through, you're shattered in a thousand pieces, your heart is broken, you know, your mind is, is all over the place, you're trying to replay incidents in your mind, trying to figure out how did this happen to me, where did this go wrong, why did this happen, you know, I'm not a weak person, um, you know, what? It, why would they do this, don't they feel, and you're thinking from the mind of an empathetic, compassionate person, they don't think like that. They look at people as supply. I'm getting supply. I'm on a mission. I don't have time to connect with my emotions because they cannot connect with their emotions. And so, let's see. So, she says the same thing that most all coaches say. It says, once you've broken free, you must close the door and any and all contact with a narcissist. This is the only way that you're going to really achieve true healing. It's a painful experience. It was a horrible experience and it's going to take time to recover from it because your heart was broken. You invested a lot in a person that you didn't realize was not real, that their character was not real. The mask fell off and you saw something that you had never seen before. And the hope that they that they bank on with you is you hope that they will go back to the person they once were. They'll never go back to the person that they once were because they were never that person. It was an illusion. It was a game. It was a lie. And for those of you that are wondering whether or not they're better with the new supply, no, because with you, they got to, you know, say with you, they came here at this level. Well, by the time they were that they left you, they were at this level. So you've trained them and they've learned some new tricks. So by the time they get to the new supply, if you went through this right here, imagine how this new supply is getting them. They're getting them at this level right here. And they just get worse and worse and worse, where some narcissists have actually killed um, their, um, their partners. And, and we talked about this on Facebook. Some of the things that I said, some of these narcissists that you were with were planning on killing you. And what they were doing was is they were slowly desensitizing you by killing your pets, uh, by making comments to you to see how you uh, react. They were desensitizing you to make it easier to do so that you don't suspect it to, to happen, to, to desensitize you like he would never do that, she would never do that. And so hopefully this video has helped some to give you an idea of like the three phases of narcissistic relationships. Uh, please, you know, subscribe to the channel. You know, let me know what you thought about this video. How did this help you? Did this give you a different understanding about some of the things? I know we talk about a lot of things in detail, and I will. I will go through and talk about these things in detail, okay? We'll talk about the love bombing. We'll talk about all this, okay? The idealization. We're going to talk about this because I want you guys to have good information to make good informed decisions when you pick your mate there's no such thing as you think you're better than me or oh you you're 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 high and mighty no when it comes to your life and your emotions you have the right to be stuck up and when i say stuck up that doesn't mean you know uh, arrogant or i have this and i have that no but you have the right to protect your heart especially from an experience like this right here you need to protect your heart you need to protect your emotion it was a bad experience but those of you that are going through the healing process don't connect with anybody right now. It's not time. When you have an open, festering room, is wound, you, it's not time for you to connect with someone. It's not time for you to connect and infect that wound because you'll bring up a whole bunch of stuff that was never closed. There are a whole bunch of doors that are open that were never closed, and you're going to bring out stuff. And then what if you do find a good mate? This mate is going to have to deal with all this drama and baggage that you're bringing from from the place of not 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 being healed you have to get to a place of healing and confidence again a lot of you just want to replace someone uh you know replace that individual because of the emotional pain and that emotional pain is so pain excuse me, it's so painful that it, it, it it's almost like you want to connect with someone to soothe that pain. But that's just like taking crack, meth, methamphetamines or heroin. This is a temporary high to, to fix a, a issue that needs to be fixed other than uh, um, with a substance, you know, that just gives you the perception that everything is okay, that makes you not think and not feel. You don't need the drug. 
the narcissist has become your drug. You have been addicted to him through the through the trauma bonding and the oxytocin. You know, you have become addicted. Where you actually, your body will actually feel withdrawal symptoms. But we got to get you through this process. And I'm here to help you. I am here to help you through that process. Please tune in whenever I uh, post new videos, share these videos because you don't know who's going through it. You don't know who's on the verge of committing suicide. There are people that we've talked to, uh, me and my mentor um, talked to, and people that want to commit suicide that are in or have come out of a narcissistic relationship and those that have committed suicide. Please, whatever you do, share these videos. Not because I'm telling you to share them, I just want people to see my face. You don't have to look at me. You can turn the camera off and just listen to what I have to say. There are other people out there like Quinn Holliday from Associate Direct, you have Angie Atkinson, you have Sarah Speaks, you have Melanie Tonius um, uh, Evans, you have um, uh, Little Shaman, I like her, she, she, she really gives you good information as well. But all these people are giving you information to help you through this process and to make you more aware of the people that are around you, okay? The people that are around you so you can make good informed decisions because your heart, your emotion, and your life is for you to protect. You are the protector of yourself, okay? So thank you guys for tuning in. Hopefully this has helped. Subscribe to my YouTube channel, Dr. Carmen Bryant, uh, at uh, Overcoming Narcissist Abuse, or uh, hit the bell so you can hear whenever I um, upload new videos. You can also go to my Facebook page, which is um, Psychological Help, Health uh, Consultants and Services. You can also email me, Dr. Carmen Bryant, D-R-C-A-R-M-E-N-B-R-Y-A-N-T at Outlook.com. Let me know what you think about this video. Did this help this? Did this give you some more information? And give me your stories, you know, and give me topics. If you want me to talk about specific things, I'll talk about specific things. I don't have a problem with that because these videos are made based on the requests that you guys have and information that I had to give you guys and from conversations that you guys have had with me, these are how these videos were made. And without you guys, I wouldn't even have the channel because you know, we've been through it. Some of you are going through it. Some of us have gotten through it, you know, and I want to make sure that I can help you get to that point. When I was in my doctor's program, the professor that was there during our, um, our uh, residency, the professor, he was a, a doctor too, a uh, doctor of education. And what he said was, is that, uh, and this is just dealing with the doctorate students, the doctor of education. He says, you're only as smart as the people that you're talking to. He says, your responsibility as a doctor of education is to educate people, to get them to your level. He says, if you can't bring them up to your level then what kind of doctor are you so I want to bring you guys to my levels of understanding of what narcissist abuse is so that you can also heal and that is my obligation to you to help you heal thank you guys for tuning in and as my friend always says and one day I'm gonna tell you who my friend is that always says that go and actually what she says is is go be great and so my term is, is my friend always says go and be great